Winter is less than a month away. It's time to prepare, especially if you plan on hitting the road. So the main thing we need to think about is, do I really need to make this trip? The items you should keep in your car. Plus winter gatherings in the middle of a pandemic, are garages and tents safer than indoors? You can try to play the game, but it doesn't change the, uh, the virus. Tornadoes don't always take a winter holiday. What makes these storms so dangerous this time of year? And the winter outlook, how often you could be taking those snowy patio pits. Thanks for joining us. I'm Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. We're going to spend the next half hour preparing you for winter. Sliding off the road during an ice storm is scary. Sliding off and getting stuck for hours with no help, even worse. Five on your side meteorologist Tracy Hinson shares the story of a St. Louis County woman whose predicament was just that. When I left, it was dry. I knew that there was a storm coming in, but it nothing had been going on yet. Um, and literally it just started sleeting, icing right as I was leaving from my work. Um, and I mean, it didn't take long for the, for the road just to become complete ice. It was early February 2018. Kelly Horner was driving her boyfriend's four-wheel drive Toyota RAV4. At the time, I had super bald tires. Going about five miles an hour uphill, she hit ice. I knew I was going off, you know, you can just feel it and I had no control over my car because my little traction control button came on. We just started sliding down and I mean, I just put my foot on the brakes and tried to maneuver to kind of swerve the, uh, like, you know, like counter swerve so I didn't keep falling the way I was falling. So I did get my front end turned around a little bit, but honestly I was just, you know, I don't know. It was quite a moment of panic, I'm not going to lie. Her car flipped over and came to rest on its side, feet from a steep drop off. When I saw what was down this way, because you know, you usually don't see what's off the shoulder of the road, you know, some panic did set in. She called 911. The operator who picked up asked me if I was, you know, injured, physically injured, and I said no. He's like, well, you know, we have a lot of other people that we need to tend to first, so you probably just need to call a tow truck company. And he gave me a couple numbers. Surprised that emergency crews weren't going to come help? It's actually standard winter procedure. When it comes to winter weather, there's a little bit more leeway that happens. So if you're in a single vehicle crash, meaning you are by yourself in that crash and maybe you hit a guardrail or a sign or you go off the road and your car is no longer operable, the best solution for you is to contact a tow truck. If you are injured, they will come help. But what if you can't tell in the moment? If you're wearing your seatbelt and your airbags don't deploy, then I think you're definitely safe. Um, if your airbags deploy, I mean, it can be startling. It definitely sends a shock through you, drops your stomach a little bit. Um, but after about five minutes, if you're not really feeling all that injured, then I think it's safe to assume that you can call a tow truck and get out of there safely from that route. So that's what Kelly did, but the two local companies she called couldn't help her. She needed a specialty tow operator. AAA towing expert Jeff Martin explains why. You should say you're down or you're being 100 foot in a bunch of trees. You know, we know not to send a flat record. We're going to send a record that has twin twin line boom on it and maybe some snatch blocks. So we'll be able to better retrieve that with maybe some extension cable. The standard flatbed tow truck doesn't have those, which is why Kelly had to wait hours Bitch, like this. Me. Check this out. I hit a whole bunch of trees and my... I, I can't even get out of my car. So hopefully someone can come rescue me. A tow truck company said it'll be about five hours. So until then, I'm just going to be in my halfway upside down car. She said it took a while, but the tow truck driver was able to right her car and pull her back onto the road. Felt a little, little sense of relief after I was back on the road for four tires on the floor. Speaking of those tires, she got them promptly replaced and hasn't had issues since. In St. Louis County, I'm Tracy Hinson, five on your side. Kelly learned the hard way that having good tires is a must, especially this time of year. In fact, now's a good time to winterize your car if you haven't done so already. We have two reports tonight. Let's begin with meteorologist Jim Castillo. The beginning of November, we experienced way above average temperatures, no problems with ice or snow. But we all know the cold and winter precipitation is right around the corner. Here are some tips 
on Winterizing Your Car. Here comes winter. Eventually, we will get snow, sleet, and threats of ice. So we went to SunTrop Ford in Kirkwood, and Dave Gibson has some important reminders to get our cars winterized. First of all, you have to make sure your uh, window wiper blades are in great shape. Some people may not know when they need a new wiper blade or two. Any advice? You could take it into a certified mechanic, and they could check it out for you. You'll see damage if they're cracked or, or worn. And don't forget this. Also, your window washer fluid, you want to make sure that's full. And the battery. Make sure your battery's in good working condition. And how do we know if our battery's in good working condition? You want to make sure it has good cranking power for the cold mornings when you try to start up your vehicle. You can take it into your local shop for that to get it checked out. Before the snow and sleet make an appearance on our roads this winter. Just have them uh, inspect your whole vehicle for uh, your tire wear and make sure your tires are, uh, they have good tread on them. One quick way to check the tread on your tires from home is with a penny. If you take a penny, you put Lincoln's head in the tread of your tires and if your tire covers up Lincoln's head, your tires are in pretty good condition. If Lincoln's head is not covered up, then you definitely probably need new tires. Now, some say to switch to a winter tire. No, I wouldn't switch to a winter tire. You just want to make sure your tires, they're all-terrain tires. So to sum up our tire check? For your tires, you just want to make sure you have good tread on your tires. Make sure they're all-terrain tires and they're not just for, you know, drive payment only. Also, make sure the air is inflated properly in all tires. In the cold weather, you want to make sure your PSI stay at a certain level, especially if it gets hot one day and then it's really cold the next day, you're going to lose PSI pressure in your tire. So just keep an eye on that. And the heating and cooling system? You always want to get your cooling system checked when you bring it into the shop. And you always want to make sure they flush it when it's needed. That'll prepare you for the winter months also. Also, there's a trick to keep your locks from freezing up. You want to keep your door locks lubricated. They sell stuff you can put in your door locks to keep them lubricated in the winter months when the ice and snow and the rain come so your door locks don't freeze up. And it's always good to wash the salt off your cars and trucks. You definitely want to take your vehicle through car washes and get that salt rinsed off your vehicle so it doesn't start rusting. Meteorologist Jim Castillo, five on your side. Anthony Slaughter here. Now as we get into the winter months, there are some things you should have in your car, especially if you're going to be traveling during winter weather or if it's forecasted for your area along your journey. So we've put together a bin of items that could come in handy especially if you encounter problems during your trip. First up, you want to have a well-stocked first aid kit, especially if you got little ones. Next up, we have kitty litter. Now, this is nothing special, but it'll help with traction, especially if you get stuck in snow or ice. Next, jumper cables. This is important any time of year, but especially in the cold winter months. Also, a battery-powered NOAA weather radio. This way, you have access to the very latest weather information. And of course, the Five in Your Side app. That way, you'll have access to the radar. You'll also want to have a blanket or two. That way, if you run out of gas, you can stay warm. And you'll want an extra roll of toilet paper, because you never know. A flashlight and extra batteries. It's also a good idea to have some water and some extra snacks. You just never know how long you could be waiting or stranded. Of course, your cell phone charger is in the car with you, and you always want to make sure you have that ice scraper. But generally speaking, you want to avoid driving during winter storms. But if you must drive during or immediately after a winter storm, travel in the daytime and do not travel alone. Stay on main roads and avoid back road shortcuts. Let someone know your destination, your route, and when you're expected to arrive. Buckle up and be safe. Well, you know, Illinois State Police see a dramatic rise in crashes during the winter. Troopers have two words of advice that could possibly save your life. Do everything slowly. Slow acceleration, slow braking, slow turning. Do everything slowly. Slow down when, there, when there's winter weather. Ice and snow, take it slow. Troopers say most crashes happen when drivers are going too fast for the conditions and need to come to a sudden stop. This past week, State Police and the Illinois Department of Transportation launched the Winter Weather Get It Together campaign. While troopers are spreading a safety message, IDOT has 200 trucks ready to spread 66 tons of salt on the roads. If you get behind a snowplow and it's actually plowing and treating, it's like hitting the lottery. Stay behind that truck. 
trying to pass is a recipe for disaster because the road behind that truck is in the best shape you're ever going to find. The, the road in front of that truck has not been plowed and treated probably for two hours. So you're going from the best condition to the worst condition and you're trying to pass one of these monsters while it's working. Joe Monroe says you also need to give plow drivers enough room to work. And just like everything else, COVID-19 is causing staffing challenges at IDOT. The agency is looking for emergency on-call drivers. Well, we've winterized the car and now it's time to prepare your home. Let's start up high. Clear the leaves out of your gutters. You also want to make sure the water is draining away from your house. Those downspouts, that water needs to be a good 10 feet away from your house. Check the seals around your doors and windows for drafts and get those fixed up. And it's a good idea to get a heating system tune up. You don't want your furnace going out in the middle of a cold snap. Keeping them maintained will keep their efficiency peak. Plus, they can be dangerous and you want to make sure that you're burning that much gas that it's being done in a safe and effective way. Now remember to change your furnace filter. Experts recommend staying away from the really cheap ones. You don't need a high-end filter. A mid-grade filter will do the job just fine. Now as temperatures drop, there are some who need help to stay warm. Heat Up St. Louis helps low-income families, the elderly, and people with disabilities pay their utility bills. If you'd like to donate, look for the link in our weather section on KSDK.com or the Five on Your Side app. The cure for cabin fever for many of us has been to get outside. But how can fresh air keep COVID from spreading even as the colder weather forces us back inside? Our Abby Larico asked the experts. If you must go out, it's best to stay out. Outdoors, that is. Yeah, so we've learned early on that ventilation helps. So having more airflow through an uh, environment works. We know that outdoors, we see much less transmission. That's because it's easier to stay six feet apart when there's more room, like in a backyard. The fresh air also helps dilute the COVID particles that might hang around in more stagnant indoor air. You need new fresh air coming in, and that's where this notion of opening our windows, our doors, may help. Spaces that open up, like garages, could bring some benefits of the outside in, but tents and other closed structures that take the indoors out might not do much good. And you can try to play the game, but it doesn't change the uh, the virus and the way it transmits. You know, if, you, if you're in an enclosed area and there's no airflow, that's inside and that's a high risk environment. And sharing a table poses extra dangers for sharing the virus. I think people have hoped that if I'm just outdoors, that there's no risk. There's still a risk if you're eating, you're unmasked within six feet, and especially within three feet. Even with the outdoor setting, it's, it's, it's not foolproof. Sunlight is said to be the best disinfectant, but both doctors we talked to say no amount of airflow is a substitute for social distancing, inside, outside, or anywhere in between. Unmasked people within six feet is the main way that this is transmitted. So you're saying that if I'm sitting maybe next to a friend at a bonfire, the COVID doesn't just blow away in the breeze? Not gonna just blow away. It doesn't matter if you're inside or outside. If you're right next to them, that virus is getting directly from you to them. Abby Larico, five on your side. The traditional tornado season is in the spring, but that doesn't mean you should let your guard down in winter. In fact, one of the worst tornadoes to hit St. Louis happened on a dark February night. Around 2 a.m. on February 10th, 1959, with temperatures in the mid 50s, a powerful tornado touched down east of Eureka. While people were sleeping, the twister with winds as high as 150 miles per hour made its way east, tearing through St. Louis County. The tornado wreaked havoc in Brentwood, Richmond Heights, and Maplewood before heading to Forest Park. Nearby, it knocked down Channel 2's TV tower, sending the massive steel beams crashing into a house. The twister also ripped a hole in the roof of the St. Louis Arena before continuing toward downtown, where the worst was yet to come. In the Gaslight Square area near Olive and Boyle, the tornado ripped walls from buildings, slicing off entire floors of apartments and hotels. A few blocks away, a three-story apartment building collapsed, burying more than two dozen people in debris. 17 people were pulled from the rubble, but not everyone made it out alive, including Mildred Campbell and five of her seven children. Two of her daughters survived. The tornado left a path of destruction nearly 25 miles long before breaking apart across the river in Illinois. As the sun rose, the search for survivors went into full gear. 
In all, 21 people died, another 354 were hurt. Nearly 2,000 buildings were damaged or destroyed. President Eisenhower vowed to send relief. Cleanup and rebuilding would continue for years following the disaster. Now, after that tornado, there was a call for the city and county to upgrade sirens. This was during the Cold War, and at the time, sirens were designed to warn of a nuclear attack. They were finally converted to storm sirens in 1967. More violent weather on New Year's Eve 2010. A tornado touched down just before noon, damaging St. Paul's Church in Fenton. Another hard hit area, Sunset Hills. 112 buildings were damaged or destroyed, including homes and businesses. The tornado also damaged a historic neighborhood in North St. Louis, Lewis Place. The leaves have fallen, the trees now mostly bare. It's time to look ahead toward December, January, and February, our winter months. While we've had a few cool snaps, late autumn has been rather mild overall. That general trend looks to continue for much of the winter. Water temperatures have continued to fall below average the last few months over the equatorial Pacific as a moderate to strong La Nina develops. Traditionally, this weather pattern is one that keeps us warmer than average as it shoves the jet stream farther north, limiting how much cold air we see. When it comes to rain and snow, well, that can vary. There have been three stronger La Nina winters in St. Louis since 2000-2001. That winter was the coldest of them. Snow came early, covering us in white for more than half the month. December 2000 remains the second coldest December on record in St. Louis due to that early snowfall and the cold pattern, despite being a more intense La Nina year. Winter 2007-2008 and 2010-11 were the last two recent winters with a stronger La Nina in place. Both winters were quite snowy with more than 30 inches of snow, a little colder than average, but not by much. And in both of those winters, snow was on the ground by the middle of December. The winter of 2010-2011 not only brought snow consistently from December into March, but an outbreak of severe thunderstorms on New Year's Eve. More than a dozen tornado tracks were identified with the strongest being an EF3 in Sunset Hills. The end of October into early November gives us clues as to how the jet stream will behave this winter. Last month, when Hurricane Zeta was moving in from the Gulf while Oklahoma City was having a devastating ice storm, that's the type of wavy jet stream pattern that can result in big snow here if the cold air is available. Now, we do expect a warmer than average winter, but most likely there will be occasional outbreaks of Arctic air heading our way. It all hinges around the polar vortex, making the cold air available and the storm track that's favorable for us to get a good snow. December should be warmer than average, January about or a little below average, and February looks close to average temperature wise. The big question, just like every winter, is there cold air available when the storm track is favorable for winter weather? We will have our chances this winter, but they're going to be limited, most likely after the new year. Overall, total rain and melted precipitation will likely be near average for us, but don't discount the possibility of an impactful winter storm or two from the middle of January into February. And like we saw last weekend, we will keep a severe weather eye out for any volatile weather patterns. And while the chances of a white Christmas aren't looking so great, keep your fingers crossed. And before we go tonight, don't forget about your pets. The Humane Society says if it's under 35, bring your pet inside. Keep Rover and Fluffy happy. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. Be well and stay safe.